Hi guys, welcome to another lecture and today we will be discussing basics about neonatal resuscitation and RP. And before I begin, I would like to request you to like, share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you haven't downloaded our awesome app that is available on Google Play and App Store, both, uh, I would like to request you to please go there and uh, download the app. We have an amazing image based course there. And we also have multiple free lectures that you can uh, take advantage of in the app. So uh, links, all the links are there in the description below and uh, let's begin the lecture. So today's lecture is neonatal resuscitation program. And as you can see the NRP and the NRP is again, very important question. And in that, firstly, we will begin that what are the steps? So in all the resuscitation program, we go ABCD here, we go TABC, okay, temperature, temperature, airway, breathing, circulation and drugs. So firstly, we will see each and every one of them and which is important. So firstly, temperature maintenance is important. You have to, you know, go there. You have to check all the equipment. You have to start the warmer beforehand and you have to, you know, che check that the warmer is not below the, uh, you know, the AC vent or there are no dafts of air going on. That is why the temperature maintenance is very important. Hypothermia is a big issue in pediatric population. So temperature from 36.5, more than 36.5, then 36 to 36.5 and less than 36 is less than 36 is hypothermia. 36 to 36.5 is cold stress. So this is that important definition that I want you to remember. Now, to maintain the airway, you have to place the head in the sniffing position, sniffing position, and you have to suction mouth before nose, M before N. In alphabets, M comes before N. So, this is our point. Then, breathing, uh, all the breathing, circulation, and drugs, we will be seeing that how do we give. So, firstly, when you go in a delivery, when you go in a delivery, here, when you go in the delivery, you have to go and ask four questions there. Which are the four questions that you have to ask? So what do you have to ask about the gestational age to the gynecologist? That what is the gestational age of the patient? Second is amniotic fluid. If the amniotic fluid is clear or is it meconium stained? The third is the number of babies. Like uh, it is a single delivery, it is a twins or is it a triplets? And fourth question is the, if there are any additional risk factors. So these are the four questions that you go and ask first to the gynecologist. And according to that, you have to identify the four questions and which are the additional risk factor you have to ask for. Like diabetes, mellitus in the patient, mother, PPH in the mother, post-datism, post-datism or in children, if there is a cord prolapse, so all these are the questions and additional risk factors you have to ask. Now, how many resuscitation, how many people are required for resuscitation? So in a term, in a term singleton delivery, in a term singleton delivery with clear amniotic fluid, with clear amniotic fluid and no risk. So all the questions, the four questions, in all questions, you know, you have a good answer. So is that what you have to uh, uh, send as one person, one person is enough who is skilled in the neonatal resuscitation. In twins, in twins, we require two teams, two teams, okay, one person is not enough in twins. If, but only one to two skilled person can do, like if there are two teams, it is fine, but uh, you require two people, two skilled people. Again, also in risk factors, same, you require two skilled people if there is a risk factor, even if it is a single delivery, if there is a risk factor there, then you are required two skilled factors, but two skilled uh, people. Okay, so that is again very important that you have to understand. So this is the important things you do. Now, once you have uh, asked the four questions and the delivery has occurred, Okay. And the delivery has occurred. So what are the questions that you ask? So first is if the child is term, if the child's tone is good or if the child is 
breathing. Okay. So this I call it as the TGB question. E stands for term, G stands for good tone, B stands for breathing. The TGB questions, if the answer to TGB question is there, then you have to give the routine care to the child. Routine warmer care you give to the child, you maintain the temperature, you position the airway, clear the secretion. Suction is not mandatory nowadays. So, uh, you know, you, if the TGB is yes, then you send the child on the mother's side and uh, you have to, you know, uh, give breastfeeding as soon as possible. Now, uh, if TGB is no, that okay, uh, the, the child is not term or if the child is uh, not breathing or child is not crying, then what you see is that you actually, uh, you know, put the child under the warmer. You will position the airway and clear the secretions and you will stimulate the child. To stimulate the child, uh, you have to either pat on the back or on the soles of the child. Okay, so that is where you stimulate the child and you have to ask that next question is that if the child is, is apneic or child is not breathing or if the child is gasping, gasping is something like an air hunger, gasping is an air hunger and we give the score of 1 to gasping in Apgar score. So gasping, if the child is gasping or if the heart rate is below 100. So if the answer is no, okay. So then again, you ask that if the child has labored breathing or if the child has cyanosis. If yes, then you have to give positive pressure ventilation, supplemental O2 or positive pressure or it is also known as delivery room CPAP. Okay, you either give free flow O2. Free flow O2 is either given by O2 hood or uh, the nasal cannula. And if you are seeing that the child has cyanosis, then see it, in many children, there might be acrocyanosis might be present in the fingers. So it is usually due to hypothermia, but it improves. But if it is persistent or if the child is, you know, showing signs of respiratory distress, like uh, the retractions are there, the child is grunting, the nasal flaring is there, then you give O2, okay? Now, if the child is apnea gasping or uh, heart rate below 100, the, the answer to that is yes, then you have to start positive pressure ventilation to the child. That is bag and mask. Bag and mask ventilation you have to give you have to attach the spo2 monitor and uh, ecg monitor is not available everywhere so you remember that uh, uh, you know the bag and mask you attach now uh, if the heart rate drops below 100 okay if the heart rate drops below 100 at any point of time in resuscitation then you have to uh, you know check for chest movement if the chest movement is there or not now, if the chest, usually when we give positive pressure ventilation, the chest should go up and down. And if it is not going, then we go for corrective steps. Which are the corrective steps? It is MR SOPA. MR SOPA. So, MR stands for mask reposition, mask, repos mask adjustment or reposition airway. SOPA stands for suction mouth and open mouth. P stands for increase the pressure, give more pressure. And A stands for alternative airway like laryngeal mask airway. So we can give that. But at any point, if the heart rate goes below 60, okay, if any point, if heart rate goes below 60, you have to intubate the patient and start positive pressure ventilation. Uh, and starts chest compression okay so first question everyone asks that if the heart rate goes below 60 what do we do so first step is not to give adrenaline first is to intubate the patient and start the chest compression and you have to turn the spo2 100 now if when we are giving here positive pressure uh, you know ventilation here we give we are giving bag and mask so in bag and mask what is the spo2 that we keep so, uh, oh, sorry, what is the FiO2 we keep? What is the O2 uh, that is given to the patient? So, for term baby, the O2 that is given to the patient is 21% and for preterm, it is 21 to 30%, okay? Because we do not give very high amounts of oxygen to patients who do not require intubation or whose heart rate is not very low. Because again, we know oxygen leads to retinopathy of prematurity and the oxygen-related toxicities are there. That is why we give minimum acceptable as, uh, FiO2 to the patient. But when we have heart rate less than 6, we when we intubate the patient, 100% O2 is to be given to the patient. And... If still heart rate is below less than 60 beats per minute, we give 0.1, okay? 
we give 0.1 ml per kg ml per kg 1 is to 10000 that is 1 is to 10 diluted adrenal in iv okay intra cardiac is not given we give iv or if it is iv is not available then we give intra tracheal the second uh, preferred method in newborn is intra tracheal okay now what are the preductal spo2 targets so this was a question that was asked in 2019 neat pg uh, in which uh, what was asked was uh, at five minutes, what do you expect the preductal SPO2 target? The first thing you should know that the minimal preductal SPO2 target is 60 to 65%. Okay. 60 to 65% is the minimal preductal target at one minute and it normalizes at 10 minutes. So this is very, very important. And this table is not very necessary to learn, but just remember these two things. So it, if it is asked, then you might have, uh, you know, some idea. Now, uh, in this, again, airway, breathing, circulation, as I told you, we went step by step. And you we have to give adrenaline if the heart rate is less than 60 after 60 seconds of CPR, okay? Immediately adrenaline, you do not have to give. You have to give adrenaline after 60 seconds of CPR is given and still the heart rate is less than 60. So that is again very important. The ratio is 3 is to 1. The compression, CPR compression is 3 is to 1 in newborn and that you have to remember that the ratio is 3 is to 1 and this 0.5 to 1 ml per kg is the intratracheal dose while 0.1 to 0.3 ml per kg is the intravenous dose and all this is how you check the baby. And these are the things that you need to do. Uh, this is the basic about neonatal resuscitation and there are multiple other things. And this was the basic rapid revision. Uh, it is a lot more questions are there, a lot more in detail is there. But, uh, you know, this was the basic. And I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one.